the value of a brand is how much extra am I paying above the substitute. And if I'm not paying extra, you don't have a brand. The most important thing is to not worry about your slogan, your spokesperson, the wrapping. It's to worry about the substance. Work that matters for people who care. You are busy trying to sell something that solves a problem people don't think they have. And if you're showing up trying to sell something that people don't think they need, they're not gonna listen to you. We are going to be marketing with people, not at them. And that is a fundamental shift from the way most business people think. There only used to be demographics. The only thing a marketer could pay attention to is, what kind of car do you drive? How old are you? What's your income? Once the internet showed up, particularly Google, but mostly Facebook, we could say, this is for people who like that. This is for people who dream of that. This is for people who believe this. Those are psychographics. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. It doesn't matter what your income is. It's what's your narrative inside. This is Fancy Feast Gourmet Cat Food, a very popular product in the US. Let's be clear, cat food is not for cats, because if it was, it would come in mouse flavor. <laughs> cat food is for the people who buy it, that we tell a story to people that makes them happy to serve it to their cat. We have to think of not the biggest possible market, but the smallest possible market. The smallest possible market that can sustain us and figure out how to bring that group of people something that they can't imagine being without so that they will tell other people. I don't want the biggest blog. I don't want to have the number one best-selling book. I am not interested in whatever I would have to do to get more. I am happy with enough to do it for the people who want me to do it with them. We're not running for elected office. We're trying to do work that matters for people who care. So find the people who care and then do work that matters for them. A million people paying you, you know, $50 a year, that's more than enough. That's an astonishing amount of money for anybody who's watching this But A million people. There's 7 billion people in your total addressable market. Find out what the people you serve believe, only serve them and ignore the rest. So don't come at this as the customer's wrong. I have this briefcase full of stuff. This is what I have to sell. It's how can I solve this person's problem? A lot of people don't like marketers more than don't like accountants, which doesn't make a lot of sense because accountants have a job and marketers have a job. What do marketers do? Well, here's what we don't do. We don't spam people, interrupt people, trick people, force people to do things they don't want to do. That's a different task that calls itself marketing. That's not what we do. The biggest marketing lesson I will share with you tonight is seven words. People like us do things like this. And that is what the definition of culture is. What you need to do is get clear about who's it for and what's it for. That the way we become designers of a future is by asking three questions. Who's it for? What's it for? And how will I know if it's working? That's design thinking, those three questions. There's a guy who's got, you know, four coffee shops in New York City. And he says, I want to make better coffee, period, for people who want it. He works with people he cares about. His cash flow is positive. He does the craft he wants to do. And it's not someone else's agenda because he's not a public company and doesn't want to be. I think the strategy you want to use is to not market to these people because they're really good at ignoring you. But market to these people because they care. These are the people who are obsessed with something. And when you talk to them, they'll listen because they like listening. It's about them. And if you're lucky, they'll tell their friends on the rest of the curve and it'll spread. If you know 10 people, you give this thing to them. If they tell other people it's good, if they don't tell other people you need to make something better. What do you have to do to get me to buy your dark chocolate? Right. Very good dark chocolate doesn't cut it. Extremely good dark chocolate doesn't cut it. I'm not gonna even talk about extremely good dark chocolate, but I'm gonna talk about Rogue or Soma or Askinosie because Sean Askinosie doesn't make extremely good dark chocolate. He makes insane dark chocolate. That's the cost. The cost is if you don't wanna make average stuff for average people, you have to make unbelievable stuff for a few people who care. It doesn't matter what people want, we want them to want what we have. So you, marketer, take this money and go get me more. 
which leads to this average products for average people. The thing that's going to decide what gets talked about, what gets done, what gets changed, what gets purchased, what gets built is, is it remarkable? And remarkable is a really cool word because we think it just means neat, but it also means worth making a remark about. Worth making a remark about. We said it's good enough. Actually, it's not. The marketers that are disliked by humans are disliked because they have non-remarkable products that cause them to act like selfish jerks. So if you begin by asserting that you need something that is remarkable to a unique group of people, you're 80% of the way there. The only ones who are listening to you are the ones who know they have a problem. It's the weird people that are gonna raise their hand, that are gonna pay the money, that are gonna talk about you, that are gonna show up. So instead of worrying about the middle where they can't stand you, it's at the edges where we get a chance to make a difference. If you are hoping to win on sort by price, you're doomed because the internet loves sort by price and someone's always gonna be cheaper than you. It's a race to the bottom. Even if you do win for a little while, you're always gonna be afraid because someone can get even cheaper than you. This is hard news to hear in an engineering-centric culture where the whole mindset has been, how do we do it right? Not, how do we do it interesting? It turns out that doing it interesting is what makes the weird people show up. Low price is the refuge for the marketer who has nothing to offer, except it's cheaper. If that's all you have to say, then you better be the cheapest. For all the rest of us, we have to say, this costs more and it's worth it. And if you're not comfortable with that, then you don't believe it's worth it. The reason I'm in this field is because at the same time, there's also a race to the top. And it turns out that if you go on the race to the top, you can win more reliably. It's just harder. This costs a lot and it's worth even more than that. Yes. That's where we have to head. So before I started ranting, you may have thought what marketing meant is things like likes and clicks and how many people are following you and hype. No, actually marketing is more like what does it cost and what's the story? And actually marketing is what you support and you use actually marketing is now what you make. It is as far from advertising as it can be. I don't think you have any business being a marketer unless you have empathy for the people you are seeking to serve. So what do I mean by empathy? I mean, you don't know what I know. You don't want what I want. You don't believe what I believe. Here, I made this. It might be for you. The best way to begin as an amateur marketer is to start with people who believe what you believe and want what you want. So selling is largely an artifact of good marketing and marketing is making something people want to buy and talk about. So job number one, before I would build a sales team is, how do I build a contagious, viral, useful service or product that spreads without me having to call people on the phone? And so what our job is as marketers is to suss out that feeling, make an assertion, and then present it to those people. Don't tell me you're an expert at Facebook yield optimization, because that might be worth a dollar today, but tomorrow it's worth a dime. Tell me you're an expert at seeing humans for who they really are and what they're afraid of and what they want to become and that you're good at telling a story that's true that lights up their eyes. It's easier to start a business today than any time in history. The only person who's stopping you from starting a business is you, right? right? Access to technology, access to capital, access to information, access to markets, never ever been like this before. I mean, it's not hard anymore except the voice in your head, the resistance, as Steve Pressfield calls it. But the hard part is once you see it, to have the guts to be wrong. If I fail more than you do, I win. Because you get to keep playing. If you get to keep playing, that means you get to keep failing. And sooner or later, you're going to make it succeed. I'm leaping. Here I go. It might not work. And you cover yourself against the downside, and you see what happens if 500 people engage. And if you're lucky, you get to do it again. There's a difference between being good at what you do, being good at making a thing, and being good at marketing. We need your craft, without a doubt, but we need your change even more. It's a leap to choose to make change. It feels risky, fraught with responsibility, and it might not work. It's entirely possible you were telling the wrong story to the wrong person in the wrong way on the right day, or even on the wrong day. Fine, but that's not about you. 
That's about your work as a marketer. And you can get better at that craft.